Fifth grade Amy B violin. Well, what can I say? This is a very difficult grade. Most students don't have too much trouble getting up to fourth grade and achieving an A or perhaps a B plus. Uh, but fifth grade is really a step up from fourth grade. It's what's called a level two exam in Amy B, which is like the intermediate level. And overall, it's it's a bigger exam. There's more technical exercises, more scales, more arpeggios. Um, lots lots and lots more um, compared to fourth Take grade. Take you through a few of the main points that I think are important for fifth grade. I'll start with the technical work. The first thing is scales. Uh, the tempo of the scales is much faster, much more difficult because you've got three octave and you've got melodic and harmonic minor scales. The main thing about the tempo is that you really need to start slowly. So start at the fourth grade tempo and then work your way up in increments of five or ten and then also use the rhythm, the rhythm patterns, which some of you may know about. But really be true to yourself because there's no use in going faster if you can't play it in tune or you can't play it rhythmically. The next thing is double stops. Double stops are quite a challenge for most students and uh, requires independent control of the fingers and really accurate ear for the intonation so that you can tell which finger is out of tune. So. Um, a method I use for that is playing the double stops, putting both fingers down, but just playing one string, having the bow on one string, and then swapping over and then doing the upper line, but still having both fingers down, so that way I can hear which, which line is out of tune, which, which note, which finger. Uh, next thing is bow strokes. There's a lot of bow strokes that you need to really um, have mastered for fifth grade. Um, You've got your legato, your staccato, detache, martelle, hook stroke, and more so in fifth grade, spiccato and sautier and ricochet. So these these new ones, spiccato a lot more, and the introduction of sautier and ricochet, um, you really need to know how to play those and then use those in the pieces. The final thing for the technical work, and in fact all of all of the work for fifth grade, is is a sense of intonation and understanding of tonality. So what I mean by this is you need to understand uh, what key a piece is in or what key an arpeggio or something where an example is the diminished and dominant and chromatic uh, arpeggios and scales. These are, these are very difficult because the tonality is so foreign to everything that you've done in previous grades. So it's not just an arpeggio, but it's actually got a, it's got actually a, uh, structural tonality behind it which is a really good idea if you understand it. You might understand it by ear but also the theoretical knowledge is handy to have as well. Also the chromatic scales, very difficult. You really need to master the fingerboard, all the positions of all the fingers in different positions um, up the fingerboard and also the different individual finger positions for each finger. In your studies and pieces, uh, a big advancement for fifth grade is the expressive interpretation and I've taken a lot of these notes out of the syllabus so I'll just read them out for you. Expressive interpretation including string changes, fingerings, bowing subtleties and vibrato. So it's all about expression and interpretation in fifth grade. There's a lot of great repertoire. Uh, I teach a lot of my students the Bach and the Schindler's List and they're quite expressive pieces. You do need to have control of the bow. You do need to use vibrato and uh, the subtleties in the bow. The next thing is the ability to choose and use musical techniques appropriate to the style and period of the works presented. So what this means is you need to be able to uh, choose the right, the right techniques, uh, the right musical techniques for the piece that you're playing. So if you're playing a modern piece, it's obviously going to be, it's going to have different phrasing to a Mozart piece. So Mozart and classical music has very specific phrasing, which is, um, is more like a tapered dynamic at the end of phrases, whereas more modern music or romantic, romantic music doesn't use those sorts of things. Another option would be um, trills and mordants, things like that, these little decorations. They are, um, they are different according to the style and the period of the piece. So you do need to be aware of those, uh, those things. The last thing that I want to talk about is the articulation and phrasing of bowing. So that, that follows on from, from those things. Uh, 
uh, phrasing is really important and phrasing goes with dynamics and it's an expressive technique and you really need to have really good control of your bow and that's bow speed, bow pressure and bow location on the string. So you really need to start thinking about those things. With all that, let's begin our scales. Uh, we're gonna start with three octave scales. We've got the A major set and I'm gonna go straight in for tempo. And first of all, I'll play detache and then legato slurs three to a bow. A major three octaves. One and uh, two and uh The next one is A melodic minor, detache and legato. One and uh, two and uh. Arpeggios three octave at tempo forty eight. One and uh, two and uh. and legato slurs. One and uh, two and. Uh. Now I'm going to play the arpeggios for uh, the A, three octaves. The tempo is 48, so it's quite slow, three to a beat. The next scale is B flat major. One, two. And the next scale is B flat harmonic minor. One, two. And now the B flat arpeggio three octave at tempo 48, detache. One and uh, two and uh And now legato slurs. One and uh, two and uh The next lot of scales are two octave scales, E flat set, and there are three different bowings, triplets, three bows to a note, slurred eight to a note, and spiccato two bounces per note.
E flat major two octave triplets, three bows per note at tempo 92. One, two, three, four. Slurs at tempo 120. And now spiccato at tempo 132. One, two, three, four. The next scale is E flat melodic minor two octave and we'll start off with triplets, three bows per note at 92. One, two, three, four. And the next bowing is slurred eight to a bow at tempo 120. One, two, three, four. E flat melodic minor with slurs eight to a bow at tempo 120. One, two, three, four. And now spiccato, tempo 132. One, two, three, four. E flat harmonic minor, two octave, at tempo 92. One, two, three, four. And now they go to slurs eight to a bow at tempo one hundred and twenty. One, two, three, four. And now spiccato. One, two, three, four. Two octave arpeggio commencing on E flat with Martelet Boeing, tempo 126. And now with legato slurs three to a bow at tempo 144. One and uh, two and uh. 
diminish and dominant arpeggios and chromatic scales starting on A at tempo 100. One, two, three, four. <laughs> And now commencing on B flat. One, two, three, four. One string scales and arpeggios starting on A major on the A string at tempo 92. One, two, three, four. And A melodic minor. One, two, three, four. And now B flat major, still on the A string. One, two, three, four. And now B flat harmonic minor. One, two, three, four. A good habit to get into playing broken chords is placing both fingers on the strings. Even though you're playing broken chords, both your fingers should be down, should be put down together so that in sixth grade, your fingers are already there and you're used to that way of playing double stops. Another good thing to do is to play just with a really light fingers and to encourage that you can play a little bit of vibrato just to loosen up the fingers and so that they're light on the fingers and you can easily adjust them if, if needed. As I said at the beginning, a good idea for double stops is to play one line at a time. So, for example, I put both fingers down but I just play the bottom, the bottom line. So, then you go back and play the top line. So it can get a bit confusing, takes a bit of practice to do. Double stops. The first one is A major in thirds, tempo 96 using broken chords. One, two, three, four.
The next one is A major in sixths. Same tempo. One, two, three, four. The next double stops is B flat major in six. One, two, three, four. And I should mention, don't ever play vibrato on any technical exercises unless it is a vibrato exercise. So no vibrato on scales, double stops, arpeggios, or anything like that. Uh, the, if you play that in the exam, the examiner might think that you're trying to cover up some bad intonation. So don't ever play vibrato unless, like I said, when you're just loosening up the fingers on the strings. It's a, Sometimes you can do that just to loosen up the fingers, make sure you've got light fingers on the fingerboard and you're not strangling the violin. Next scale is B flat major in octaves, which is the hardest type of scale, I think. Uh, octaves, they're very hard. Six are easy, thirds are hard, octaves are very hard. Here we go. Technical exercises. The first one is shifting to fourth position. So you can read everything in the book. Uh, basically it says that the shifts can be in a romantic style, which means we, you're allowed to play the shift. So there's gonna be a little bit of a slide, a little bit of a portamento there, and that's allowed. And that's actually a good thing because it's a little bit easier to shift that way if you can hear what you're shifting in and out of. So here we go. At tempo 104, one, two, three, four. Again, have really light fingers on this one. Slow it down. So slow it down to about 50. Don't go up faster unless you've actually got it 100% in tune and rhythmically uh, accurate as well. Just don't go on. Exercise 5B, melody with turns after Franz Buffard. These turns have to be really accurate and really rhythmical. So slow it down and don't go faster unless it's really accurate. There's two different ones. There's, uh, there's three notes in the turn and then there's another one where there's four notes in the turn. So have a look at the printed, the printed out version of the, the long form version of the turn in the music there and just really be make, make sure that you know what you're doing. The other thing is there's a lot of dynamics in here which are really just in markings for 
phrasing. So the examiner really wants to see how you can control the bow for the dynamics. And this is quite a musical exercise, so I'm sure if you played a little bit of vibrato just to warm up the sound, I don't think the examiners would mind at all. They'd probably look at that favorably, especially on the long notes, so the minims and uh, the tied minims as well. Tempo 76, around about, so if you want to play it faster, or I wouldn't play it any faster, but a little bit slower, maybe 66 to 70, 76, that should be fine. One, two, three, four. Exercise 5C, bowing exercises. There's three different bow strokes in this exercise. The first one is the up bow staccato to be played in the upper half of the bow. So when you start this, you start with a fast down bow and then smaller up bows, and it's like a martelet. You really need to, you really need to squeeze that uh, stick. And a good thing to do is to practice doing bow push-ups like this where you're pressing the stick of the bow down, and that's your martelet. The next thing to do <clears throat> from bar nine is the, up, the upper half of the bow chain bowing. And you have to have, to have really firm uh, bow contact with the string here, so. So really thick sound and really smooth legato string crossing. And finally, the slow ricochet and spiccato just above the middle of the bow. Placement of the bow on the string is crucial, otherwise you won't get the bow stroke correct. So it's a slow ricochet and then a spiccato. So. And that's down, down, up, down, up. And it's around about the middle of the bow, maybe even a little bit above the middle of the bow. So let's go. The tempo is 104. One, two, three, four. So there we have it, all the Amy B Violin 5th grade scales and technical work. This has been a demonstration, so it's not really a lesson because there's no interaction, but I hope you find it very useful in your practice and something that you can look to as an example for you to model your work on to, and to also be aware of the standard that's expected for the grade. So good luck with all your preparation and I've got a 6th grade video online now, so once you've mastered fifth grade, you can go on to sixth grade and watch that video. Violin Virtuosos with Rodney and Anthea Wickstrom. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for all strings related education videos. Visit our website violinvirtuosos.com.au and like our Violin Virtuosos Facebook page.